Hello, I am Dustin Goes to Hollywood. I'm Mally Moore. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's most bleak endings. And Nailed happy <laughs> horror movie season, Ooh, everyone. Yes, it is. This is our first episode of October. It is a spoopy month. We, we, a spoopy? Yeah, spoopy. Spo- you never heard that? The fuck is spoopy? Oh, we're going to have a long talk after this is over. Okay. Um, we need a name for this month. We didn't come up with one. Uh, the five spoopy movies of Spooktacular. Are we doing five? How many weeks? There's are we? five episodes oh, this week. We have five horror movies. Wait, five up. episodes this week. Well, well, sorry. I'm sorry. Five I episodes. Ain't got time for month. that. That's a lot of episodes. Five episodes this month. So oh, okay, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> uh, well, whatever. It's it's Halloween time. It's October. We're ready for these horror movies. Every episode this week. Well, this month. Just sorry. Stop saying sorry. that. I'm used to doing three episodes a week when I did a podcast. Every episode this month. We will have a new horror themed movie that has that classic Silver Linings tagline. It's a movie that's got a fucked up ending or a sad ending, and not just a typical horror movie ending. These endings are especially uh, down. They're in line with the rest of the movies we've done. And maybe we'll do a better job than how we normally do. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's not get their hopes up. No, not for this episode. This one's kind of difficult. Yeah. Cause I like, will say, in regards to this horror movie month, Mm-hmm. I have had so many people recommend movies. Ask what we're doing for Halloween. <laughs> oh well, that's, that's and the I have big had one. so many away. people try to guess, mm-hmm. no one's and got it. no one's got it. That's good because I, I think, don't. Huh? I mean, it's a curveball. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. Oh yeah, when I think, you when you pitched it, I was confused. <laughs> I think we have. I don't want to say obvious ones for this month, but I think we have ones that people are going to instantly recognize. This is probably going to be our most popular episodes for sure. But the actual physical October 31st episode is, yeah, if anybody guesses it, I will be amazed. I'll be uh, very surprised. But to kick things off, our first uh, episode this October, this spooky, spooky Halloween time of, uh, of t- time of year, uh, our first episode, as you can tell by the title, is... 2009's Drag Me to Hell, directed by Sam Raimi. Oh, yeah. Man, 2009, really? 2009. This is, it feels like it should be older, but 2009 doesn't seem that long ago. I feel like ago. it should be newer. That's what I'm saying. It, it doesn't feel that long ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it definitely was. Uh, yeah. Starring Allison Lohman, Justin Long, Loma Raver, and Dileep Rayo. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Oh, I have no idea. You is recognize that, dude, that Is that the dude from Inception? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this movie had a budget of thirty-one. Uh, well, sorry, had a budget of thirty million dollars, and worldwide had the gross of ninety-one million dollars. It's pretty great. That's Damn. three times your your payback, wow. man. This is maybe a milestone for the show. This movie has a ninety-two percent fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Certified fresh is that the highest? Ninety-two percent that we've done. Yeah. Fuck yeah, it is. What was Blue Valentine was up there. I don't know if it was. Uh, I want to say it was eighty nine. I think. Whatever. Um, no momento on that one. <laughs> it's definitely up there. It's got to be top two because movies we tend to do apparently don't sit well with others. Which is, I think we do pretty good movies for the most part. Blue Valentine was an eighty eight. So this is probably the highest. I can't think of any other one that we've done. So maybe Requiem, but I doubt it, just because of the how <laughs> the just the theme of the movie. Anyways. Drag Me to Hell, 2009. Uh, this movie is just classic. It's got Raimi stank all over it. It's totally reminiscent of the Evil Dead series. Spider-Man 2 series. <laughs> Spider-Man 2 is all totally in there. Uh, do you have anything you want to talk about before we actually uh, review the trailer for this Man, movie? I accidentally closed out of my notes, and now I'm all confused. <laughs> you can, well, let's listen to the trailer. While we do that, you can try and find your notes again, all right? <laughs> Excellent. Mr. Jax, I was wondering if you'd made any decision regarding the assistant manager's position. It's between Stu and yourself. Stu Rubin, the new guy? Stu's someone who's not afraid to make the tough decisions. I'm perfectly capable of making the tough decisions. I'll let you know as soon as I decide, okay? Will you help me? Please. Okay. We have an elderly woman asking for an extension on her mortgage payment. We would have to throw her out of her house. We've already granted her two extensions. It's a tough decision. Your call. 
but another extension is out of the question. Where will I live? I'm really sorry. Never have I begged for anything, but now I Mrs. humble myself Mrs. before Gennish, you. Please. I beg you. Please let go. Please let go. Security! Soon it will be you who comes begging to me. Someone has cursed you. He's the Lamia, the most feared of all demons. For the first three days, the spirit torments its victims. After that, it will come to take you. Take me where? To burn in hell for eternity. It's coming for me. Please listen to me. There is nothing coming for you. How do I get rid of this? I welcome. You can give the curse away. No! So how do you feel about this trailer, Mally? This trailer fucking rules. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I will say this trailer's fine. It's nothing like crazy awesome to me. I mean, I think you're saying it rules just because you love the movie. But no, nah, this tra- no, dude, it's a white. This trailer is a white knuckle thrill ride. I just feel it's, it's it hits its beats. It's typical. Oh, I mean, it's not really like, special in any That's way. That's what but I mean. It's like, it's badass for how great the movie is. I don't think the trailer is all that. I don't know. Well, I mean, it's a good trailer. Don't get me wrong. You it's don't just, want the trailer to be better than the movie. Some movies do that, though. I know. So. This is not one of them. This trailer rules and the movie's better. Yeah, that's a good point. So do you want to start talking about that? Let's get funky. All right. So my first note is that this is a bitch slap happy movie. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> I do not remember Literally. how many times people get bitch slapped in this movie until rewatching like it. Like every 10 minutes. A lot. Uh, mostly ghost demon bitch slaps. <laughs> so it's just a, a the character reacting to being slapped by nothing. Um. So, yeah, we start this movie off. Uh, apparently, it's a flashback. We have this, I'm assuming, Mexican family. Uh, they're going to this medium saying, you know, our son is, you know, acting crazy. He's seeing things. He's claiming he's seeing all this horrific shit. And I, I guess they're trying to do like an exorcism on him, but not really. Maybe like a seance. And so, I mean, it's something along those lines. Yeah. it's. I don't know. He's definitely well like coherent. He's not like possessed by a demon or anything. But anyways. Uh, Wait, I think he is possessed by a demon, isn't he? Or I think he the... becomes possessed. At some point, because I think maybe? the demon that, I mean, yeah. obviously, if you haven't seen the yeah. movie, what are you doing here? Yeah. This is but, where because it's the demon that's chasing her the whole movie is doing mm-hmm. the same thing with this kid, right? Years this before. This is where we get the first bitch slap already. We're like three minutes in, boom, and yeah, just bitch slap across the face. Uh, this little kid basically falls off this like second story balcony inside and his home. He's fine, by yeah. the way. Yeah, he lands. He totally goes fine. just flying over this railing. He's probably what lands nine? face. For, well, that's true. Nine-year-olds are indestructible. Mm-hmm. My past can confirm that. that I should have died age, like eight times. That's the age of indestructibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, he lands totally fine, probably face down on this uh, it's hard, hard floor at the very bottom. Uh, his parents watch on from the top balcony on, in horror as the floor starts to crack. And we see... Well, hang on. The uh, dad does yell, hey, wait, I'm coming down there. That's true. <laughs> to let you know, the exposition is just crazy, but... Um, yeah, so this kid's just sitting there, all of a sudden the floor starts to crack, and you hear the roar and the fires of hell, it's, the floor literally starts to break apart, and we see, like, demon hands reach for him and pull him down, this kid's screaming in terror, it's pretty cool, because we, like, we see, like, the giant shadows on the I wall like that of everything happening, and the mother's screaming and crying, and then we cut back, and we just see a hand being pulled down under the ground, as the ground reforms as if nothing ever happened. I, Dude, hell is crazy. So let me get this straight. This is my first discussion, I guess. So this movie posits the idea that not only is hell hell is a literal, literal real place, but it can also traverse space and I guess time. Because what this movie is impl- is is positing is that this ground breaks apart and hell is underneath, 
and then it reforms. And I'm assuming when they go back over there and dig throughout that hole, they're just going to get dirt and crap. Yeah. So that's mine. I've never thought that to be a thing. Like I thought, okay, I mean, that makes more sense than hell just being like underground somewhere, doesn't it? Well, that, no, that's the point I'm trying to say is that I don't, I think this movie is positing the idea that hell is a real place, but it's never in one place. You can't just get to it. It kind of appears when it needs to, which I think is a really cool idea. I never would have thought of that or heard of that concept until this movie. Like people always either say hell is a place you go to, like it's not a physical plane you can get to, or it is just deep below the earth. And this movie kind of takes yeah, both dude, ideas. This, this gets deep. It's like it's a physical place, but it's ever moving. It's like the island from Lost. Ooh, I was just gonna say, it's great, great analogy. Uh, and people are always trying to escape and then go back. It's yeah. And then Jeremy, uh, no, what's his name? Jeremy Davies shows up in yeah. season four. Yeah. Is um, he in this movie? <laughs> yeah, that would have been great. I love him, dude. <laughs> I would have backed that. Okay, so we go to present day, and we're introduced to our lead character, Christine Brown, who is this bank loaner at this, at this bank. Did you and say she's spank? No, at this bank. Bank. At this okay. bank. Okay. At I can see where you read confused, you. Okay. but yeah, at this bank. It's been a, I've been awake for like thirty six hours. Same here. <laughs> Um, but she's listening. She's in traffic. She's listening to these self help tapes, which I just think is adorable. Yeah. She arrives at work, and this character has this. I don't want. I don't know if it's Allison Loman herself, but this character has a very specific look. And by specific look, I mean she looks dead faced all the time. Like she's completely clueless. She just has this like I agree <laughs> mouth breathing, wide eyed kind of look about her the whole movie. I don't know if that's a Sam Raimi direction. It like it's the like everything that ha- like literally everything she looks at. It's like the it's like the first time she's, she's ever, ever seen, seen it. Like she sees her she boyfriend. Has, it's like the first oh. time she's ever seen it. She's in this trance almost. Oh, let's talk about the boyfriend. So her boyfriend is just along playing clay. Uh, they're having I guess her, she's on her lunch break and she's at his work and they're having uh, lunch in his office. She apparently he collects coins like oh, a nerd. And, hold up, <laughs> go ahead. Before we talk about the nerd, what did I miss? Coin collection. Mm-hmm. He refers to her as cocky and sexy. Does he? Yeah, I must have missed. I that. don't know why, but that I've never laughed harder than Justin <laughs> Long saying that to a woman. I, I must have missed that because my girlfriend's obsessed with him. So when we were watching this, I had to like you gotta calm to her him. down. Yeah, so I must have missed that line. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he apparently collects coins, and she's got like this really crazy rare coin. She goes to give him. Uh, that'll come back up later. Excuse mm-hmm. me. Uh, he she, she goes to leave, and his mom calls as she's leaving, and he over, she overhears him talking to her. Um, Trudy Dalton is a bitch. Is yeah. My next note. That's his mom. Holy shit. He mentions to her mom, you know, I. I you, I was just having lunch with Christine, and her mom's like, "Oh, who's who's that?" And she's like, "Oh, it's you know, it's the girl I've been dating for like the past year." And her mom starts going off about this other girl that she knows, and how she's a doctor now, and you guys can make such a great couple. You shouldn't be fooling around with these girls that are wasting your time or something like that. The total like snobby kind of mom thing. Oh yeah, straight up, yeah, biatch. Um, before oh, I should have mentioned before this scene, uh, we're introduced to this idea that uh, in the bank that. Uh, oh wait, I'm not sorry. It, it's, it's after this scene. Uh, Christine wait, is at her is bank. It? Yep, she's at her bank, and she's apparently there's an assistant manager position coming up, and she's vying for it, but she's competing with this new loan, uh, this new lender that just started oh, at the bank, named Stu. This guy. Uh, her and Stu are vying for this position, and their boss, uh, I think his name is Mr. Parks. Uh, is basically telling you, know, oh, it could be either one of you. And he, he comes to her and he asks her, you know, can you maybe pick me up some lunch? And, you know, she wants this position. She's like, yeah, absolutely. And then Stu comes in like a total, like, king move. Like, is like, oh, yeah, can you also get me a sandwich? No mayo or something like that. And <laughs> I just had to say, yeah, that's a total baller move. I mean, it's a se- it's Dude. sexist. But you're right. If you want that position, that's how you, you, you do it. But that dude has the most punchable face yes, of all time. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, uh, Christine goes, uh, has this, she sits down and she has this woman approach, uh, this, uh, gypsy ish. I guess that's not, a, that's not the right, that's the right word, right? Gypsy, this gypsy woman, uh, sits down. Yeah, yeah gypsy. 
I'm, I was trying to think of a less offensive word, but I guess gypsy is the right word. She sits down oh, and... Gypsies listen to this. Yeah. Uh, she sits down... Yeah, well, I mean, they definitely don't now. <laughs> and it turns out that she has missed uh, two of her mortgage payments, mm-hmm. and she's asked for extensions. They've already, The bank has already given her two extensions. She's basically asking Christine for another extension. Uh, she goes to her boss, says, you know, this is what the situation is, and the boss is like, you know, it's a tough call. It's your decision. And, she, of course, she wants that uh, assistant manager position, so she knows if she... Tells the woman uh, she can definitely have another extension. It's going to make her look weak. So she goes to the woman and says, you know what? I'm sorry, but we can't offer you another another loan. She even says another extension is out of the question. Yeah. Which is, yeah, that's very authoritative, authoritative move. So before she goes to the boss, I should say that the woman says, you know, bless you for trying. She says, bless you, child, or something like that. And when she comes back, she tells her that she's not getting the loan extension. And the woman begins to beg. Uh, should we should mention her name. Her name is Miss Ganush. S- Sylvia Ganush. Sylvia Ganush. So she's, she starts begging and like making a whole scene. And Christine calls security over there because she's terrified. This woman won't let go of her dress. She's on her hands and knees. And the woman says that uh, Christine has shamed her and that she's very offended. Uh, you know, she's like, I've never begged for anything in my life and you shamed me. And then she. Uh, she goes zero to 100 real yeah. fucking quick. And she attacks her in the bank and has to have people you know security pull her off of her and i think it's funny because she goes from bless you to basically i'm gonna curse you yeah. <laughs> all within one scene just the whole time making the grossest noises of all time god yes like taking her teeth out and like What's placing that? them on the table on okay the desk. i will say she has like the most horrendous cough ever but as a long time chain smoker i completely relate to that Ugh. i understand that life oh yeah, that's, now, that sound effect is gross. Teeth thing and it's all like gross. squishy sounds that she's coughing yeah. through. Yeah. So good. this is what I want to talk about. What do you think of Christine's decision to not give her the loan extension? She was doing her job. Thank you. I, <laughs> I, Everybody I always talk to her like, oh, she deserved what she got at the end. Blah, blah. No, she didn't. No, she, she did was her just job. doing her job. Like, I'm sorry. As shitty as she the situation is. She had two is, extensions already. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know a lot about banking, mm-hmm. but they take their mortgages seriously. That's the yes. whole reason banks make money. So I, I I agree that's a shitty situation, but everyone's like, oh, well, she, you know, sacrificed her morals for her own career. No, she didn't. She she did her job. That's what lenders do. And unfortunately, that's kind of how credit and mortgages work. So I think this whole movie is unwarranted for what happens to her. However, I will say I still really love the movie. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Mr. Jax even tells her, you know, you handled that just right, you know, so he's like confirming she did the right thing. I don't think she did anything wrong. So the rest of the movie is crazy. So it's at the end of the day, Christine's leaving and she heads outside and she notices that there's this yellow, I believe it's an Oldsmobile, which is the same the yellow same, of Oldsmobile course. that's been in all the Evil Dead movies, and I think it might even have been in one of the Spider-Man movies. It's Sam Raimi's actual it's, car. I think that's made an appearance in almost every Sam Raimi film. Just about, it? yeah. I mean, I can't. So she notices this car, realizes no one's in it, and the only other I, one of the only other cars in the parking lot is her car. So she gets in her car, and she's noticing that this handkerchief is uh, floating in the parking lot as she's sitting in her car waiting. Horrible CGI handkerchief. <laughs> This I wrote in, in large bold print. Scary handkerchiefs because it like slaps sla- like it flies into does the a window. Full, like it flies into the window, then it just says full three sixty around the car. Yeah, it just kind of like peels off the car, rolls. Yeah. And Christine's kind of watching it, and it goes around the side of the car and through the back, and then she realizes someone is in her back seat, and it is Ms. Ganush. <laughs> and there's like a solid like three seconds of just Silence. Sylvia sitting there. Yeah. Before either one of them react. Yeah. And she kind of like leans forward into the light and there's like no music or anything. It's really creepy. Uh, but yeah, she tells me, you know, you shamed me. And then she starts to attack her. So she <laughs> she tries choking her and everything. And Christine has, has a stapler in her car and staplers are, staples her face. Right. Which yeah. Is Three stra- times. Straight up. Twice in the forehead. Once in her fucked up eye. Yep. It's straight up Evil Dead style. And I noticed... I don't know if you noticed this. There's like funk music that plays in the yeah. scene. It's really weird. Uh, so Christine like, you know, drives her car into another car. Yeah, and she reverses. She and throws then... the car in reverse and then starts driving away as Ms. Ganish is choking her. 
and she puts her Christine puts her seatbelt on in order and uh, just in time for her to slam into the back of this truck as Miss Gannage goes flying into the front seat of the car and her teeth pop out uh, from banging her face on the side of the glove box. And she starts gumming the shit out of Christine's like, chin. Full, like, <laughs> Christine's, like, from her bottom lip to, like, her neck. That <laughs> whole region is just in Ms. the Gannis's gypsy's mouth. mouth. And they're making sounds. They're just like... <laughs> she's just gumming the shit out of her chin so christine grabs a ruler that she has and pushes it like stabs Ms. ganish in the throat and she starts trying to cough to get it out and i think it's funny because she like pr- like it's like a missile taking yeah, out like, of her mouth shoots out of her mouth and like cracks it a hole cracks in her window, the window. <laughs> okay and then so they wrestle a little more and then christine like super kicks her out of the car Mm -hmm. okay this is where we gotta stop for a second when did they both develop superpowers she's got the miss gannon she's got the super cough she yeah she's like projectile project like like shooting things out of her mouth like a nerve christine like apparently never has skipped leg day Mm -mm, because she sends her flying mm -hmm. out of the side of the car Mm -hmm. yep and And they're just what the hell (laughs) and then like she like, I know he had just, like, Sam Raimi had just done Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But damn, man. So she manages, Christine manages to get her car door closed and locked before Miss Gannon she come, can come back. And she, starts, she screams, like, you know, I beat you, you old bitch. <laughs> and uh, great line. Great line. Um, Miss Gannon disappears. She drops down out of sight underneath the car. And Christine is looking around. and We see what Christine sees. She can't see anything. And all of a sudden... Miss Gannon stands up in slow motion and has a huge cinder block in her hands and bashes her car door open. <laughs> uh, and Greg's, Again, superpowers out so of nowhere. It's so great because it's like it, nothing's happening for like a solid 15, 20 seconds. All of a sudden, just the rise of like the fucking like the thing from Fantastic it's Four. It's so epic. And she, she drags Christine out of the car. She drags her onto the pavement of the parking garage. And she rips a button off of Christine's coat. And yeah, after all that. She just wanted a button. She just wanted a button. Yep. And so Miss Gannon starts like speaking some foreign tongue into the button. It's basically she's cursing it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, she's basically saying that, you know, I begged you, uh, you know, to help me. And now soon you'll beg me to help you, basically. Yeah. So that's kind of the end of this little whole. That's basically what sets up the rest of the movie. So, oh yeah, we're what? 15 10 to 15, 10 to 15 minutes? minutes into the movie at this yeah. point. We've already had one superhero fight. Mm-hmm. So, Christine has she goes to like this uh I don't what would you call it? It's like a like her and Justin, what's the boyfriend's name? Clay. Clay. Yeah, her I'm and call Clay him Justin. Go to Like this... they're just driving down the street and they like are walking down the street, driving. I think they're, they're I doing think... something on a street. Yeah. And they, pull they up see to the like a psychic sto- reading. Yeah, it's kind of like a psychic. And she's just like, "Oh, I'm gonna do this." I'm just curious what's going on. So she goes in, and there's like this, you know, the the, the psych the psychic is is Indian, and he, there's like this quasi racist Indian music kind of playing in there. It's got like the, uh, what is the like the centaur kind of music playing? But anyways, yeah, she has to get her palms right. I think right. Isn't her palm? She wants to get her palm yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, he reads her palm and he sees the face of the demon. He's like, you know, I I can't help you. You've got to go, basically. So that's kind of where that part... There's not not really anything that happens there, I don't think. Um, Wait. I think he just tells her, you know, you're... Someone's cursed you, basically. And Christine doesn't really think too much of it. Yeah, you're right. So the next day, uh, Clay uh, presents Christine with a little kitten as a gift. And let's check in with our our ever occurring uh, segment. Does the dog die? dot com. I checked it out for this movie. Now, while there is no dog in this movie, there is a cat, the kitten that he gets, that uh, Christine gets. But we'll we'll check in on that later. But I just wanted to let you know that this is relevant to what happens because I did happen to check. Um, for some reason, my next note, I don't remember what it's in relevance to, but I just wrote down Port Queen. Oh, I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> you lost me on that one, man. <laughs> so she has a book. And she's in her kitchen. And she has like this book that she's trying to, that she's going through. And I don't remember why, but she closes the book and this photograph falls out. 
And I guess it's a picture of her when she was younger. And she's taking a picture with a pig. It's like a Polaroid of her with a pig. And the sign on the background just says Port Queen. Did you not remember this? Fuck, you're right. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know what it's in relevance to, but I just thought it was great. Um, again, so the, the Baphomet, the, the, the demon that she's dealing with, I can't remember what it's called, like Lumia or something like that. Uh, it starts, like, terrorizing her in her house. You know, it, it doesn't have, like, a physical manifestation yet. It's kind of like a shadow. So, like, it's, like, closing doors and making pots rattle, like your typical horror movie right, stuff. Right, right. This is all... We've we've seen this movie. We know how this But we goes. don't really ever see bitch slaps, because here comes another bitch slap. This is Christine flying... Seriously. And, yeah. Ghost <laughs> pimp hand is strong, strong as fuck. Uh, not only that, but this is where we get the Sam Raimi, like, classic how to ride a, ride a horror scene. Yep. The snap zooms. We got the Dutch angles, check, the jump cuts. Check and check. Just straight up Sam Raimi style. It's so great. Um, it's so broke, don't fix it. Yep. So Clay decides he's going to stay the night with Christine. Or she stays the night with him. I can't remember. I got the question. Who sleeps with their windows open above their bed? Like, I can maybe understand if you have your window cracked and you want air coming in, but... They have these huge, like, double oh, and windows. fully open. Straight up open. Not only that, they're in the city, so you know there's got to be traffic and, and shit bugs, coming in. And bugs, man. And bugs. 100% bugs. bugs. Speaking of bugs, uh, as they're sleeping, a fly enters the room, starts flying around the room, and is, like, doing a little, his little fly agenda. Uh, it lands on Christine and uh, goes in her nose, comes out her nose, and the other nostril, and forces his way into her closed lips and you know she wakes up coughing and choking on it okay i've had a fly fly up my nose and i've had a fly fly into my mouth really i've never had it go up one nostril and come out the other did it force its way into your mouth no yeah <laughs> i this was a fly is okay this destined. is why i wear people always question why i have a bandana around my neck half the time it's because i ride a bike everywhere you gotta and cover that shit up you gotta cover your mouth up because swallowing a fly is not awesome nope but no, it's never forced its way into my mouth. So that's, I've man, never been like a whole fly, fly hive. That's a movie, right? Flies in your stomach making a... Not like, I guess not a beehive. But I don't want to watch that movie. That's a cool movie. I've lived that movie. <laughs> um, so she wakes up terrified because of this bug in her mouth. You know, she's coughing or whatever. She goes to lay back down and it's not Clay laying next to her anymore. It's Miss Ganesh again and she attacks her and... Looking creepy Crazy as creepy. Ah. So, <laughs> she, Miss Gaddy decides she's going to vomit all over Christine, but not normal vomit, just straight up worms oh. and bugs, like the grossest shit you could imagine. Uh, and it turns out this is a nightmare sequence. She wakes up totally fine, sleeping next to her boyfriend, uh, which is just, again, Sam Raimi style. He likes to fuck with his, with his crowd. Always. Um, I wrote the word blood bank here because this is one of my favorite scenes of the movie. <laughs> And if you know this movie, you know what I'm talking about. So she goes back to work the next day, and she's obviously, like, freaked out. I think this might be also the scene where, you know, uh, before Stu asked her to bring her lunch once, and he said, no mayo. And this time he says something like, uh, I asked for no pickle. And she said, no, you didn't. And he goes, yeah, I kind of did. <laughs> and he's just being a bigger dick than normal. But she goes out to uh, to her desk, and she's sitting there, and Stu comes up, and he's like, hey, can you show me... You know, this, this, and this, because he's the new guy. And she's reluctant to, because she wants this assistant manager position. So she's like, you know, f uh, fine, I guess I will, whatever. Because he threatens to tell her boss that he, she doesn't want to teach him. As uh, he's sitting there, she notices someone tapping on her desk, like Miss Ganage did when she first came in. And she looks down, and it's the same knuckles, the same fingernails and everything. And she's, it's Stu doing it, but she's just imagining it. Yeah. So she decides, she, she just has a breakdown, and she... Tells her to get the fuck off his desk. He freaks out and leaves. And her boss comes over. And is like, what the hell is going on? And she starts dripping blood from her nose, right? Like a total nose. Straight up nose bleed. Yeah, yeah. But then it just goes full on bananas. Because oh she starts God. like projectile. Fire hose like like blood. she's a dragon, but with blood. And she's just spraying blood all over herself and her like, boss. I feel like Sam Raimi wa was watching The Shining. <laughs> and saw that hallway the scene. Elevator. He's like... Let's put that in the mouth. How can I do something like that? Let's put that in someone's mouth. So it's, it's so great. Like, the dude is, her boss is covered in blood and he's just, he looks at somebody's like, did I get into my mouth? <laughs> this dude is so great. Uh, my favorite part is that in the middle of her like spewing blood, he yells, stop it. Stop it. 
Like, <laughs> it's not like she can help it. <laughs> like, she's like covering her mouth and it's still coming between the fingertips. Just yeah. blood is spewing. It's like, dude, it's like, it's not her fault. Don't oh, you get can mad just, at her. You can just move. It. Yeah, step out of the lot. <laughs> but it's so great. He says it the like Prometheus it's such an, conundrum. He says it like it's such an inconvenience. Stop it! Like if somebody's trying to tickle him, but he doesn't like yeah. it. Yeah, like you stop. <laughs> no, she is spewing blood like hard, that, like fire hydrant. Don't tell her to stop. Call the fucking nine one one. He says it. Yeah, again, like it's an inconvenience. <laughs> um. So Christine leaves for work for the day, and I guess decides she's gonna go find Miss Ganish's house. So she goes yes. to this house, I guess, where she looked her up from. And this is actually where we see the Oldsmobile, the Oldsmobile again. I think it's an Oldsmobile. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a Delta. It's a it's a 88 Delta. Um, mm. So she Correct goes to the house. And, she answers, and this girl answers this door. Uh, this woman that's probably about the same age as her. And, you know, she's like, oh, she's, you know, not here or whatever. And Christine's like, you know, I just really want to talk to her or whatever. And the girl makes a comment that just says, you used to be a real fat girl, didn't you? <laughs> and I guess that's relevant to the port queen photo. Yeah. But I have no idea what that has to do with anything in this movie. Like, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> Gypsies can read people, I guess. <laughs> what is her being fat when she's younger? I don't know. But that's my favorite line in this movie. That is a pretty good movie. I do like that. Uh, so the girl lets her into the house. And apparently this is a wake. And it's not a normal wake because it's a nah, it is wake. fucking lit. It's a straight up party. <laughs> Uh, and Christine actually like accidentally like bumps. when I die, yeah, can we just throw a party straight up. She accidentally bumps take, into take, take the cast to the club. Let's she do accidentally this. bumps into the casket and drops Miss Ganish's body all over the floor because apparently Miss Ganish has died yeah. between now and when she cursed her. Um, and so like the body falls on I top mean, of Christine. She was old, and then they got in that superhero fight. Mm-hmm. I mean, yep, uh, understandable. <laughs> They, they, she, the body falls on Christine, and I guess all this embalming fluid falls out, and she starts gumming her. Like the body like starts the body, gumming Christine. Somehow the body, <laughs> the mouth falls open. The body falls on top of Christine, and of course, her chin, like the mouth lands directly on her chin, and just one last gumming, man. One Even last gumming. Death. There's embalming fluid coming it's out. It's disgusting, dude. Straight it's, out disgusting. Oh. Also, I'm not entirely sure that's how embalming. F- I don't. I don't, I don't think that works, man. I don't think you just. I got a friend. I don't, I don't think you just pour it down the mouth. I got a mortician friend. I'll ask her. So, anyways, the, the girl that let her that let Christine in the house is just like, you deserve everything that's good that you got coming to you because you disgraced yeah. our family. So Christine goes home, and again, the demon- I'm sorry, no one deserves to be gummed by a dead body. Not at all. Uh, so Christine goes home, and then he, again, the demon starts fucking with her. Uh. It, you know, it, ch- it chases her upstairs. Basically, she locks herself in her bedroom, and I think this is so cool because we get this idea that the the demon basically has the, a body of a goat. Because this great, this is one of my favorite shots of the movie. She's standing in front of the in her bedroom and her bedroom, looking at her door, mm-hmm. and we hear like the clod hopping, yep. uh, something a person's door, and underneath we see the shadow of like goat hooves, like stopping in front of the door. And Christine goes to reach her phone, and I think this is, it's not intentionally supposed to be funny, like, it's supposed to be scary, but this is probably the part where I laugh probably the hardest in the movie. She pulls out her cell phone in an attempt to try and call her boyfriend, and as she's doing it, you watch the battery in real time drain immediately, and then just turn off. <laughs> she must have an Android. I just think it's so great, like, she turns, she opens her phone, just like, boop, 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 goodbye, and <laughs> she had a full battery. I don't know, I just think it's hilarious for some reason. I've been there. So... <laughs> I know that life. The the demon's like hand shadow underneath the door starts getting larger and larger and it's reaching for Christine. And basically he enters the room and he like flips her upside down, holds her in the air, and just throws her against her armoire. And I gotta say, how is her back not broken at this? Because he throws her across the room into an armoire that shatters and she gets up like it's no Dude, problem. Dude, I'm telling you, superheroes? superpowers. Man, this is maybe a prequel to one of the Spider-Man movies. Oh. oh, uh, so this uh, oh no, the psychic. Yeah, this is where we check back in with the do- uh, the does the dog die website. The psychic pretty much gave her this book that kind of suggested if you want to get rid of this curse, you can try sacrificing animals to the. Demon. Well, he doesn't give her. Doesn't he just straight up tell her that? No, he gives her a little book. It says something like animal sacrifices. I think he just straight up told her that. I think he does both. Like he says, you know, you could do this, and then he gives her this little book because I remember seeing the cover of the book. It says right. like animal sacrifice or something. Basically, she kills this kitten, 
And I gotta say, this kitten must be filled, like, with no bones or anything. Just straight up, a bl- it's a blood sack. Because yeah. we're, we're at a low angle. We're basically the kitten's POV. And Christine comes in with a knife. And all we see is her, like, stabbing something off camera. And blood is just gushing up. And, like, remember when she's in the bank and she does that? It's basically like that from the bottom of the camera. We're just seeing blood spew. It's like a Tarantino movie when someone gets shot. It's just nothing but blood. Uh, and she decides she buries the cat in the backyard so her so her boyfriend doesn't find it. So they're apparently they're going to her and her boyfriend are going to this dinner where he's finally going to meet her mom. Mm-hmm. And she makes a cake, and this cake is like a raisin frosted cake thing. I don't Not know. for me. Not for nah, me. Nah, it didn't look all that great. Uh, her mom's being the total D, but she's got the jewelry all around her. She's got the hair up and, like, the weird bun Which, thing. after that phone call earlier, like, the moment she walks on the screen, you're like, yeah, you're the I mom. get it. Yeah. Of course you are. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I get it now. And the dad kind of looks like Billy Bob Thornton, which I think is hilarious. Yeah. But they're having, <laughs> they're having this dinner, and this mom is just quizzing her and just the whole time trying to be an asshole to her. And, you know, Chris, she's like, uh, why? You, you, Christine makes a comment, like, I don't talk to my mom much, and... uh. Clay's mom is like, well, why not? And she goes, well, I don't see her that much because she is an alcoholic or something like that. And that's when his mom starts to turn to liking her. It's like they're bonding over mm. alcoholism. Do you not notice that? He's like, well, she they goes, she's do. Like, I wouldn't say I like them. It's like though. she feels. No, no, no. I'm saying like after Christine mentions that her mom's an alcoholic, that the mom kind of like retracts a little bit like, oh, I shouldn't be so hard on her. And she's like, well, you know why? Alcoholism is a hard thing, blah, blah, blah. And they start like bonding over it, which I think is a weird thing. But Christine starts losing her shit here because she like, the cake has an eyeball in it and she's like freaking out. And she hears like this loud pitch noise. She throws her cup against the wall and starts screaming at nothing. Basically revealing that she is a crazy person Mm -hmm. at this point. So, she's not crazy. She's cursed. She is cursed. Everyone else around can't Everyone else see thinks she's fucking she's nuts. Yeah. So she gets a phone call and turns out that she is losing the loan deal that apparently she had been setting up with this other bank. Yeah. And this bank is now backed out. Uh, I don't remember. I think it's like First National or something like that. But uh, turns out this is because Stu stole some items off her desk, which we'll get to later on in the movie. Um, uh-huh. So Christine is like deciding she's gonna sell all her shit because he takes that during the whole blood gushing thing. Yeah, right? he takes it at the end of the blood gushing scene. Uh, Christine decides she's gonna sell all her shit to get money to pay for, I guess, the the medium to deal with this stuff. So she goes to her her little like uh, shed, I guess, outside, and then she starts having another freak out. She she sees Miss Gannon who's attacking her, and I think this is great. Because there's so much that happens in this scene yeah. that is worth talking about. So, Christine is pushed up against like this wooden pillar in the middle of the shed. And she notices there is a literal anvil rigged in her shed. Like, it's a straight up Acme cartoon yep. anvil that she manages to basically pull down the Don't Wake Daddy contraption to like land on Miss Gannage. And when it does, <laughs> her eyes pop out of her head into christine's mouth oh i'm sorry before this happens though miss ganish literally shoves her entire fist into christine's mouth yes she is fisting her mouth there are a lot god damn it there are a lot of things going in there's just a lot of mouth play in this movie a lot there's throw up and blood and yeah mouth fisting so, and this is the worst rulers. cg i think i've ever seen when her eyes pop worse out worse than head, the handkerchief you think yeah, I think the eyes are all worse right, than the handkerchief. Right, right. It's like that handkerchief is rough. It looks like it was intended to be a 3D shot, which I don't remember if this movie ever came out in 3D, but I don't think it did because this these eyeballs look terrible. But basically, it turns out it's another hallucination. So Christine sells all her shit, and the next scene we get is her in her kitchen with her money laid out on the table, eating a big ass thing of ice cream because that's women's hmm. two favorite things. Ah, damn it, ice cream <laughs> and money. So, and we lost all our female <laughs> listeners. Well, that's that's a good stereotype to have, if anything. Ice cream and money, what's not to love about those two things? You're, I'm not wrong? No, you're not wrong. <laughs> so her boyfriend shows up and he's like, okay, look, some shit is going down with you. I believe you that you're experiencing all this shit. Let's go. We'll find this medium. So they go to basically the same house 
that we saw in the very beginning of the movie, the Hispanic woman who, you know, was trying to help the family before they go right. to him and she, you know, pays all this money, please help with all this that's going on. And the Indian guy comes to the psychic. Mm-hmm. Uh and but but Justin Long drops her off. He doesn't stay there with her, which I thought was weird. Um so basically with their their idea is they're gonna lure out this demon and somehow with physical touch Someone that's possessed by this demon, if they touch something, another physical, animate, sentient object, the spirit will transfer to it. Yeah. So they're like, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have this seance. So convenient. We're going to have this seance. Bring out the demon. We're going to have this demon touch a goat, which this goat is the greatest fucking thing of all time. (laughs) We're going to have this demon touch the goat, and then we're going to decapitate the goat. Because killing an animal is apparently a lot, you know, it's an animal sacrifice, so that kind of helps out. And, uh, you know, it's not a human, which I have to say the whole reason she killed the cat because she, she thought it was going to get rid of him. And then she, when it doesn't, she goes back to this Indian guy and she's like, you told me killing an animal. I had to kill that poor kitty. He was like, you're dealing with fucking demons. Not this shit is not set in stone. Right. <laughs> which I was g- glad someone finally did it. Cause in movies that would have been the end of it as soon as she killed that cat. Yeah. You know? So, all right. In movies, like this is no and fucking movie. Her medium has an assistant too, with this gnarly mustache that we're gonna get to. But so they basically have this this oh, this seance, and the guy. demon does in fact possess one of them, and he possesses the actual medium. Yep. And this shit is terrifying because she's basically uh, like shit is going off in this scene. Mm-hmm. There's like ghosts that appear, and shit's like flying up and rattling and shit. But after the demon actually uh, possesses the woman. The Indian psychic is like, you know, surely this woman's soul is not of that much importance to you. What do you really want, basically? What can we give you to leave her alone? And this woman has the craziest fucking voice because it's so cool. She's possessed by the demon and she's like, we want the soul of Christine Brown. And just the way they he says it is so fucking stellar. But anyways... He, she goes to reach the, the possessed woman goes to reach for Christine. Christine knocks the woman's hand onto the goat. Yep. And she starts screaming in pain. And then this goat starts ta- uh, talking because now the goat is possessed by the this demon. This is the best part of the movie. Terrible CG, but this goat well, is fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. So the guy, the assistant guy, goes to decapitate the goat with a machete. The goat. It's so smart. It backs away to where the machete cuts his chain open. So now the ghost's not chained to the table anymore. Bites the hand of the guy. (laughs) Yeah, bites the hand of the guy trying to cut his head off. And now the demon has possessed this guy. And this is great because this is where we get the sickest demon dance moves I've ever seen. This demon possesses this dude. He floats up in the air. He's doing the straight up Evil Dead thing, like the cackling, the dancing in midair, kind of happy, jolly dances. And the music is like straight up operatic music. It's really fucking. I funny. dance exactly like this guy. Just like with hands twirling. I'm all stuff. yeah. I'm all hands. I'm all hands. <laughs> I, don't, I don't don't use my legs too much. All right, but they managed to banish away the demon, and when they get outside, because uh, I believe the house burns down, if I'm not mistaken. When they get outside. Yeah. The Indian guy is like, you know, I don't know what you think you happened tonight, but we didn't get rid of the demon. We only just pushed him away for a while. And he's like, he manages to get the button. Uh, he has the button that yeah. uh, Miss Gannis cursed. And he's like, look, you need to take this button and give it to someone as a gift. Because when you give it to someone as a gift, then they will have the curse and you will no longer have it. Which I think is great because the way he gives her this button is this. Again, I don't know if this is intentionally supposed to be funny or if it's just Sam Raimi's style, but he puts it in this envelope, and then the way he licks the envelope closed, he does a very sensual, like, licking up with his eyes closed, mm-hmm. and then he just immediately, like, tilts his head at a cot. Do you remember this? That's how I the lick way- envelopes, huh? <laughs> That's so great. But he gets this envelope, and she's like, okay, I, I, gotta, I gotta do something with it. So she's driving down the road, and she's like, I'm gonna go uh, to this diner i'm just gonna sit here and find someone to give it to and so she's which is so fucked up this is part that we'll say is kind of she's fucked like, up all right here's what here's what i love who am i gonna yeah. fucking kill so she's sitting in this diner and she's just like looking around at all the different people and on the way like as she's there she's looking around she sees this old man with an oxygen tank sitting by himself in the corner and this is she starts getting up and slowly starts approaching this old man 
And as soon as she gets there, uh, presumably his wife, this older woman, yeah. enters frame with like a piece of pie, and he starts smiling. I think Sam Raimi missed an opportunity here to go full on Raimi style. I think what should have happened is he's she's approaching this old man that's sitting by himself and looking sad and lonely, and all of a sudden. Like four Playboy models kind of surround him, and it turns out <laughs> he's got like all this money, and he's a straight up Mac Daddy. But yeah, so she, she's like, okay, I know. I what think I'm that might have been too Raimi. Maybe that's probably why he's. A We've already had mouth not. fisting. Yeah, yeah. So she's like, it's I know. What I'm really do. one or the other. She's like, I know. What I'm gonna do. I'm gonna call Stu because Stu has fucked me over a lot. So she calls Stu, and she's like, look, if you don't get here in five minutes or whatever, ten minutes, then I'm gonna tell them that you sold the deal to first national and you fucked up the deal and blah 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 so Stu gets there and he's like a fucking quivering bumbling idiot and she's like i'm gonna give you this gift you have to take this gift he's like what the f- what are you talking about this is all you want like freaking out thinking it's a it's a trick on him but she decides last minute that she's not gonna do it bullshit she's like you know what you're you know whatever you don't deserve it so so now she's got this button. She's got to get rid of this thing ASAP, and she doesn't know what she's going to do. So she's like, you know what? I'm going to go and give it back to uh, to Miss Ganners. So before she does that, because Miss Ganners has been buried, before she does that, her boyfriend or her are driving down the road, and she's got this button in this envelope, and she's like freaking out, like, i got to get this back to her. And they, like almost stop because she thinks she sees him in the middle of the road and her boyfriend slams on brakes turns out this is old man crossing the road and he's just like you will burn in hell yep. like if there's not enough foreshadowing in this movie by the title alone <laughs> so uh, they start driving off and then like because i slammed on brakes she lost her envelope on the floor and like this big pile of papers so she finally finds it thinking oh god you know if i would have lost this this would have been terrible <laughs> yeah so she gets the envelope she's like, all right thank god we're good okay so she goes and as she's driving down the road, she does this thing where she's got like this big, it's like this tough music. And she's like, I got this mean look. She's like, I'm going to go get some, which is funny because it's like a play on Evil Dead of Bruce yeah, Campbell's yeah. catchphrase of get some. But as soon as she says that, a, a handkerchief flies onto the window again. Miss Ganish's handkerchief. Which Why the fuck not? Right? I think it's so great because it happens every time in this movie. Every time something badass, she thinks she's doing something badass or saying something badass and immediately turns on her. Like, yep. As soon as when, when in the beginning, yeah, that's she's life, like, man. When, as soon as the beginning, which is like, I beat you, you old bitch. Then the woman like smashes her window With open. The cinder block. <laughs> so she goes, I'm gonna get some. And all of a sudden, this handkerchief flies on the window, and then it seeps to the air, air the air con- uh, conditioner vents, and slides on her face. And she has to like peel it off. And again, like another incidence of badass things that instantly turn to her looking like an idiot. She tears it off her face, and she goes to throw it on the ground. Like she's done conquered it and it immediately just flies back up into her face. <laughs> I love that. Moment. Um so she she is at the cemetery, she's you know, it's pouring down rain, she's digging she digs this grave really fast, I should say. This should not take yeah, this if the is whole a huge banking hole. thing doesn't work out, she's got a great job, great, great robbing. job, and yeah. Because this is a big hole. So basically she finds Miss Ganish's casket, she goes to tear it open, she's you know, she's got the envelope, she's like, I I'm giving this back to you, hoping that will end the curse that she's gifted this button now to someone new. So she shoves it in her mouth and she tells her to choke on it. I'm saying she says, choke on it, bitch. And I think it's great because, again, she tries to do something hard ass and she tries to escape and she like trips and her hair gets caught in Miss Ganish's hand. And I got to say, is this maybe the third time she oh, gets her dude, hair ripped out? Christine should have been bald by the end she of She gets this her movie. hair ripped out a lot. Like every 10 minutes, her hair gets ripped yeah. out. I swear to God. And this this whole scene takes a long time to get through. Because she's trying to get out of the hole and it's pouring down rain. And the rain is filling up the hole. And every time she tries to get out, she either falls or Miss Ganish's body pulls on her. Or the giant iron cross above the grave hits her in the head and it's just a she has a horrible like <laughs> every time she tries to do something badass 20 things bad happen to her but anyways so she gives the button back to miss ganish and all is well in the world the next morning she's showering she's getting ready for the day she's going on this trip with her boyfriend and she gets a voicemail from her boss saying you know uh, i gave Stu the assistant manager position but then Turns out he gave away our deal to this other bank. He came in. He tried blaming it the whole thing on you. 
But then in, inconsistencies in the story, well, you know, he basically says they fired Stu and she's got the assistant manager position. So she's she's riding on cloud nine. She, you know, yeah. she's got the job going well. on it. Yep, she's going on this trip. So she's going, she's in this train station. She's about to meet her boyfriend. And she. this is so funny to me. This is another one of those unironically, I guess, funny moments to me. But she's going to this train station and she spots this coat in the window of like a shop yep. that's in there. And there's a woman in there, like, dressing the mannequin. And Christine, like, knocks on the window. She's like, I want this dress. And the woman, like, points in her hand, like, we're not open yet. And Christine starts trying to explain to this woman through the glass. She's like, no, you don't understand. I'm going on this trip. And my boyfriend is going to be really great. And I just want to buy this coat. And the woman on the other side of the glass is like, I don't know what the fuck to tell you, lady. We're not open. <laughs> but just the way it's filled, like, Christine is so hopeful that she's going to get this coat. It's just hilarious to me. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I laugh every fucking time I see this thing. I mean, it's funny, but I think it's hilarious. Wasn't that funny. And just this, along with the battery draining scene, I think are <laughs> fucking hysterical to me. <laughs> so she buys this. She ends up getting this coat, right? And I gotta say, this is a cute outfit to go to hell in, right? Oh fuck yeah! Because spoiler alert: if you didn't know about the name of the movie, somebody's about to go to hell. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna get about to get dragged to hell. Credits. Yep. So. <clears throat> she meets her boyfriend Sorry. on the train tracks, you know, and they're like, he's like, oh, you got, I like your coat, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, oh, do you like it? You know, I'm, I'm ready to start brand new, basically. And he mentioned something like, uh, oh, she goes, what happened to your old coat? She goes, oh, I threw it out. I never want to see it again. He goes, oh, well, that's weird. He goes, and he pulls something out of his pocket and it's an envelope. And he goes, because, you know, I found this button that goes to your coat. So it turns out that when uh, Justin Long uh, Clay slammed on brakes in the car from hitting the old man, the envelope she dropped was the button envelope, but then the envelope she picked back up was the envelope with the super rare coin for his coin collection that she gave him at the beginning of the movie. So she picked up the wrong thing. That's what she ended up giving to Ms. Ganoush, not the button. So the curse is still live and rapidly approaching because yeah. she's terrified. She's screaming no and backing away slowly, and she falls off the platform into the train tracks. And I got to say... This is a double whammy ending, right? Because you think one thing is going to oh, happen. Oh, that one-two punch. This train is barreling down and Justin Long screaming for someone to help and screaming, oh my God, because he thinks his girlfriend is about to get hit by a train. And Because it, it's a deep drop. It's like six to seven feet of a drop down there. It's not easy to get back up. But, no, no, no. So she's freaking out. She's laying I've on fallen the on the train tracks before. It is a bitch. She's laying there on the train tracks freaking out. I think she's about to get ran over by a train. And as the train is getting and really then... close... This is where shit goes crazy. Because this ending is fucking terrifying. The first time I saw this movie, dude, I wanted to cry. Because I was terrified of this scene. And I think I might have saw this movie right when it came out. Oh, Anyways, I saw this in theaters. The train is barreling down on her. I watched this at home by myself, I should say. The first Fuck. Time. Yeah. No, wait, wait. Sorry, I'm getting this confused with another movie. I saw... Remember Quarantine? I saw that mm -hmm. in theaters. I saw this... I saw quarantine at theaters. my house. Yeah, so I watched this alone in my house too at night, and so the train. I'm pretty sure I bought it. I was like Sam Raimi, Justin Long. I'm in. So the train is barreling down on her, and as it's getting near close to running her over, the ground breaks away, and it's just like the opening scene where it's just it's the it's literally the poster. Yeah, it's <laughs> hands grabbing her from underground. You see the fires of hell, demon faces, and everything, and they start dragging her down, burning her skin off, and Justin Long is. Freaking the fuck out. Yeah. And what's even more fucked up is as they're pulling her under, the train is going over him. So even if he wanted to help her, he couldn't. Because not only is, you know, she being dragged into hell, the train, he's able to see under the train wheels as it goes by that she is being pulled further and further into hell as she's screaming to help, screaming for help. And the last shot of her is her eyes literally boiling out of her sockets as the ground rubble closes back up. And the last shot of the film is just along crying with wide eyes like, what the fuck just happened? Holding the button that uh, was going to her coat. This is the most rock and roll ending of all fucking time. And then we just get, bam, drag me to hell. Yup. Credits. That's it. That's the end of the fucking movie. Like, say what you will about the rest of the movie. It's that ridiculous, ending, but that movie it. is a um, that ending is amazing. The ending warrants the entirety of the movie. The entirety of the movie is still really kick ass. Oh yeah, it it's so much fun. But that ending is like it like uh, there's the I mean there's scary parts of this movie where you're like oh shit yeah it's a little but for scary. the most part you're like this is a good 
fucking it's time. more it's more comedy horror than it is horror but that ending is straight up horror <laughs> yeah like oh my god so I love that ending let's talk about some trivia before we try and find the silver lining here right? okay so i mentioned already but yeah the yellow uh, delta 88 that uh, miss ganish drives is the same car that's used in all the evil dead films that's kind of his director's trademark this next one's awesome the license plate of the car uh, that Sylvia Ganesh drives is 99951, which, when turned upside down, reads, is 666. <laughs> which is, that's such a fucking Sam Raimi thing to do, to yeah, be so on the nose with it. Um, when Clay Dalton, that's uh, Justin Long's character, mentions uh, that he's traveling to his parents' cabin, uh, like, he, he t- tells her, we're going to go on this trip to the cabins, and there's... You know, all these trees and it's private. He's basically referencing the cabin from Evil Dead. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, originally, Ellen Page was cast as Christine, but had to drop uh, out to star in the movie Whip It. I like Ellen Page. I, think, I don't see her in this I role. Either. I don't either. I like her. I like this. Uh, Al- Allison, Allison Loman. Loman? is Because, again, name? she has this odd look to her that is just like, it fits with Sam Raimi's style. Like, she seems very ditzy and like not really act like she looks like she's trying to act but i think that's exactly what the character's supposed to yeah, be right. like this innocent kind of ditzy girl um so yeah Raimi uh said that this was intended to be a remake of the movie curse of the demon but he couldn't secure the rights of the film so instead they kept uh, a lot of the same elements and rewrote the story basically yeah so <laughs> yeah this is gonna apparently be a reoccurring segment because we have again some weird trivia uh, in the IMDb trivia section of this movie. Do we movie. do a lot of weird trivia? Terminator 3? That was the weirdest fucking trivia we've ever read. This is apparently going to be right. a reoccurring You're right. thing. You're right. So this is a weird trivia. And I swear to God, you can go on IMDb right now to drag me to Hell's page. And this is one of the last things on there. But apparently, this is a trivia note saying, Hitler, ex- uh, Hitler exterminated thousands of gypsies and no lamias or other demons dragged him down to hell. That we know of. Mm, he could have. That could have been what happened to him in the bunker. Why is that a trivia fact? I don't know, dude. <laughs> weird. God like bless it. the internet. I kind of want to do a whole podcast just on weird trivia, like finding weird trivia on IMDb and analyzing them. Or like putting them into like practicality, like seeing if these things are real. We need to research this stuff and find yeah. it out. Okay, so I don't really have anything else on the movie. I mean... I mean, I just, think it's a this, kick-ass horror movie. This movie is so much fun. It's it's definitely a fun horror movie. It was a sure. great way to start out horror movie season. Mm-hmm, I'm very mm-hmm. happy with it. Uh, um, as far as your silver lining, what do you got, sir? We have kind of a staple here, where that we are really bad at the goal we set yeah, out to our do. Our goal, of the podcast, is like we come close to nearly always missing it. <laughs> um, we're always stretching and reaching here. I have a little bit of a reach. And maybe I'll think of another one before the end, but as of right now, this is what I got. Uh, you know, Trudy Dalton kind of got what she wanted. She didn't want Justin Long to be dating Christine anymore, so at least one person got a little bit of a silver lining here, right? You're right? not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> I mean, at least Christine knew she was going to hell, so she got to at least know in advance. I mean, that's like a double silver lining. She didn't really take full advantage of it, but... yeah. Yeah. Oh, silver lining. Got it. All right. Well, actually, tell me yours first because I don't want to impede on it. But I mean, what do you got? Sylvia got her revenge. Okay, that's not what I have, but that's still that's an okay one. I was gonna say that asshole Stu got what was coming to him. He got fired. Oh shit! That's probably the real silver lining that here. Right? Is fuck Stu. Yeah. Fuck God, Stu. I want to punch that guy. So that's our silver lining for a person that literally gets drugged to hell. Um, <laughs> there's only there's only so much you can do with that. There is only so much you can do with that. Well, what about this, Mally? If people are are upset <laughs> by watching a person literally be drugged to hell at the end of a movie, what's another movie they could watch along this style or this vein uh, of movie that could bring them back up? What's a good pick me up movie? You say yours first. Oh, you want because me to it mine? makes more sense. <laughs> okay. Well, if you love Sam Raimi and you love this style of directing. There is no better pick me up movie than Spider Man Two from him, dude. Spider Man Two holds up. Same director. It's even got like the the surgery scene with Doc Ock. Yeah. Even has that Evil Dead feel. So you still get some like nostalgia in there. And plus, it has that same style that he has, and it's it fits so. It's amazing how weird his style fits in so perfectly with comic book movies and horror movies. 
it's very they're they're so relatable and like correlative that it's insane so that's a great movie to watch after drag me to hell what do you got oh boy is this a stretch too I'm not gonna lie; it's completely unrelated in any way, shape, or form to this movie. That's no, not. But I watched it directly after watching "Drag Me to Hell," and mm-hmm. it really helped. What's that? Ocean's Eleven. Okay, I like Ocean's mm. Eleven. Wait, wait. It's a stretch, but Ocean's Eleven, or you could watch Ocean's Thirteen because the Christine's boss plays the hotel inspector in ocean 13 watch ocean 13 right. guys yeah there you go what is that guy's name Boom, uh, nailed it. yeah that guy's great that guy is yeah he's definitely the, the hotel inspector of that movie that's a great one so spider-man 2 and oceans 13 that can't get any better than that right those yeah. are great movies okay so, Man, that was, so that is i am exhausted that guys. is 2009's drag me to hell directed by sam raimi uh thank you for listening everyone please Whoa, wait wait what's up we got to give him a taste of next week. We oh, you going to do that now? Okay. All right. Uh, what? Do you have a hint for next week? Thank God for Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> for once, right? Right. Oh. <laughs> All right. So thank you, everybody, for listening. Please uh, subscribe to us on iTunes since you're already there. And you could also leave us maybe a rating in Facebook, perhaps. I uh, wouldn't be opposed to it. Just throwing that out there. Most def. Go like us on Facebook. Uh, you can find us at facebook.com slash silver linings playlist. Uh, if you have a suggestion for a movie that's got a fucked up or downer or sad ending, please let us know. Yeah. Because uh, I don't think we don't really have much planned. After, after horror, once horror movie season's mm-hmm. over. After our five open schedule here, five days of Halloween. Maybe we can five, get, dude, well, days, five days, weeks, not in consecutive month, order, but no, Five Mondays of Halloween? <gasps> Five. No. Wait. Wait a minute. I'm thinking of a pun. Five boo days? No. Five. So thanks for listening, guys. It was been a something. great episode. Do um, <laughs> you have anything else you want to say before we go? As always, Excelsior. Excelsior.